Obi-Wan told Luke, the force is what gives a Jedi his power. It is an energy field created by all living things. It surrounds us and penetrates us. It binds the galaxy together. I was going to try to see if I could talk like him. I just could, I, I couldn't. I just, <laughs> it just always went to like a national uh, accent or something. I, I, I couldn't get there. But Star Wars fans know that if a Jedi or a Sith can harness the power of the Force, then he can levitate objects, he can play Jedi mind tricks on people, he, uh, uh, he could see things before they happen, but the Force can also take control, so beware the dark side. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> that has nothing to do with the message today, but it, it does, there's a, I can build a bridge from there, I can build a bridge. Is the Holy Spirit just a force? I think a lot of people think that the Holy Spirit is just a force. Is the Holy Spirit an it? Or is he a he? Uh, we know that God the Father is a real person. We, we, we get how person, personality works for God the Father. We, we know that Jesus, God the Son is a real person, but is the Holy Spirit a person? Hmm, interesting. Can you have a relationship, a friendship with the Holy Spirit? Hmm, let's talk about that. I didn't hear a lot of, oh yeah, so this message seems to be right on time. Okay, it's not a trick question. We're in a little series called Who is God? And so we're just looking at who is God. And the, there's, uh, the, in the first message, we talked about how this is, a, this is a mysterious thing, but God is a trinity. He is three in one. He is three persons, one being. There is only one God, and he exists in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. God the Father is not the Son. The Son, God the Son, Jesus, is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not God, uh, is not the Father, but they are God. God the, God the Father. The Father is God. Jesus is God. The Holy Spirit is God. Does that sound confusing? Does that sound otherworldly? Does that sound mysterious? Yes, and he's God. So, I mean, we're, we are looking at the Bible intently trying to discover what is God trying to teach us about who he is and what does it mean? God the Father is known by the name that he revealed to us, Yahweh, and it just means the eternally existent one. I am that I am. I will be what I will be. God's existence is not dependent on anyone else. He was, has no beginning. He has no end. He was not created. Jesus, God the Son, he, last week we, we heard how he is the living word. He is the living word of God. Again, that's sort of a confusing, mysterious thing, but we're, we're just trying from God's word, from the Bible, to understand as best we can who is God really. Not what does the internet say is God. Not what do I think is God, but what does the Bible say is God? Because it's what he has written. It's what he has revealed to us. So that's what we want to know. Jesus is visible, Yahweh. He is God that we can see. Uh, and uh, we're so glad that God has revealed to him in that way. So today, we want to take this next little step and ask, who is the Holy Spirit? Really, who is the Holy Spirit? And what is he like? And, and, and how can we know him? So I, I want to bring three truths today. And under those is a bunch of other truths. I've got a ton of scriptures. I would not even have time to read them all. I'll show you some of them on the screen. If you're taking notes, uh, you can jot them down. If you, are, if you have a Bible, I always encourage you to open your Bible or open it up on your device. And uh, I'm going to be, I'm going to read a, uh, lots of scriptures today. But I would say one of the main sections about the Holy Spirit is John chapter 15 and 16. And, and those scriptures, I will stop and take time. I'll tell you where they are, and I'll read them. So uh, those are coming, John 15 and 16, but not quite yet. I'll give you time to look there. If you've got a Bible or a phone app, just look in the table of contents for John. That, that's, that's the best way to find it quickly, and, and you can get there. Okay, so first truth I want to just talk about today, the Holy Spirit is God. 
The Holy Spirit is God. Now, I've already stated that today, but how do we know that? Is that just what I think? Is that just what some church thinks, or is that what God reveals to us? How do we know from the Bible that the Holy Spirit is God? Well, many reasons. One, the Holy Spirit shares many of the or shares shares all of the attributes of God. He shares the attributes of God. So, for example, the Holy Spirit is omnipresent. He is present everywhere at the same time. You cannot put the Holy Spirit in a box. Well, wherever you go, the Holy Spirit will be there. And that's what we talked about God the Father the same way earlier. One of the earlier messages, Psalm 139 says, where could I even find a place if I went to the mountains, if I went to outer space, if I went to the bottom of the ocean? You are there. He is omnipresent. He is everywhere at once. He is omniscient. Now, we look, we're look. we looking for Bible clues because there is a little bit less written in the Bible about the Holy Spirit, but he is there from the beginning of the Bible to the very end of the Bible and everywhere in between. And we know that he actually, he is the one who breathed upon people to actually write down the written word of God. Jesus is the living word. The Bible is the written word. So he is omniscient. And one of the clues we found for that is in 1 Corinthians 2, 10 and 11, where it says that the Holy Spirit knows the thoughts of God. He, he knows the mind of God. He has the, the mind of God. And we know God is infinite. So for the Holy Spirit to know the thoughts of God, we, that is one of those ways where we go, oh, okay, he is omniscient. He knows. Uh, he, he, and this is a clue that is, is helping us to discover the Holy Spirit is God. Okay, he is God. We know from the very first couple of verses of the Bible the Holy Spirit was there at the beginning of the earth. God has no beginning. He always was. He always he is, and he always will be. Yeah. But we can see at the beginning of the earth, of creation, the Holy Spirit was there. And uh, the uh, God, I don't know uh, at what stage this, we start the story, but the earth is without form, and it's chaotic. It is structureless. And the, the Bible says, Genesis 1-2, the Holy Spirit is there hovering over the waters as if he is like, um, uh, he is thinking, what could this be? What could this be that would be beautiful and structured? And that's what God was doing. That's what, that's what, that's, it was in the mind of God to, to create us and create the world and the universe. The Holy Spirit, so we're looking for clues in the Bible that the Holy Spirit is God. He shares one divine name with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Jesus, and the clue we found for that in Matthew 28, 19, Jesus said, go make disciples and baptize them in the, in the name, one name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. It's a really cool thing that I really hadn't seen before in that light until I, I, I did the study the, uh, for this uh, message series. Really cool. It doesn't say the names of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, there are some things about God that are, they don't make sense to us because he is God and we are not. <laughs> And we, but we just want to know, what, what do you say? What are you revealing about yourself, God? Because that's what we want to know. That's what we want to believe. That's what we want to act on. That's what we want to build our lives on. Amen? Is the truth of God's word and especially who God is. Now, in, uh, this is the fourth uh, message in the series, and I think this is where we're probably going to end here for now. Uh, uh, there's no way we could learn everything about God in four sessions together. But I, I have hoped, and I hope to today, help you see some different facets about God that maybe you hadn't seen before, to, because we know God is infinite. We need, that, we need to, our brains stretched a little bit, just, just to understand a little bit more about God and to know him. Okay, so another, another uh, reason that uh, I, I, we can see that the Holy Spirit is God is that the Holy Spirit has authority in the church. Now, I don't mean in these four walls. I mean the church, capital C, the, the believers around the world who have put their faith in Jesus. That's the church. We are a congregation of the church. And that's why you notice I'll, I'll use those two words interchangeably, but I, I like to every so often, I want you to hear me say this is a congregation. This is not the church. This is part of 
the church. Church is millions or billions of people. I don't know how many, but lots and lots of people who put their faith in Jesus. And the Holy Spirit has authority in the church. We often think that Jesus is the head of the church because he is. The Bible says Jesus, the head of the church, but the Holy Spirit is God. And he too has authority in the church. He chooses pastors and overseers and church leaders. That, that is a position of authority over the church. And he calls people to be missionaries and church planters. And uh, lots of scriptures and acts where he does this. Uh, another little biblical clue that we can see that the Holy Spirit is God happens in the early church. Some people did something very bad. Ananias and Sapphira are their names. And they, uh, they lied and Peter, one of the early church leaders, says to them in, in Acts chapter 5, he says to them, you have lied to the Holy Spirit. You knew that you shouldn't, you, you, you had the opportunity to tell the truth, you didn't, and you've lied to God. That's another one of those just little internal biblical clues that he was using the Holy Spirit and God interchangeably, meaning it's another clue, the Holy Spirit is God. He's not just some, I don't know what, just something floating out there. He is God. God, the Holy Spirit. He proceeds from the Father. He brings glory to the Son. Within the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, there is an order. There is a structure. And yet it's one being God, three persons. And the Holy Spirit, a lot of times, and that's why I think we see um, a little bit less written about him in the Bible, although he is there throughout, he takes a role of supporting the Father and the Son. It's just a really cool, God is community. And that is why we are better together. Because God is a, he is a unity within himself. He is a community. It is amazing. He is three in one. The, the Holy Spirit of, uh, is God. So this might be stretching for some. He deserves your worship. He's God. We only worship God. We worship him alone. But God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. He deserves your praise, your loyalty, your admiration, your friendship, your time. He is God. And so he is worthy of worship simply because he is God. Now, a second big truth that I want to talk about today is that he is a person. The Holy Spirit is a person. How do we know from the Bible that the Holy Spirit is a person? Does he have arms and legs? He doesn't need to. That is proof for having a body. That's what we're talking about. He is a person. He has a personality. He does the things that persons do. Do, and he does a lot of them. But the number one thing that I think is a proof that the Holy Spirit is a person is that Jesus said so. And that's, that's pretty good for me. Like if Jesus says so, and I've got some other biblical clues we'll look at, but if Jesus says so, that's good. Okay, we're, we're good. Now, now we know that's the answer, all right? He is a he, not an it, okay? So if I called my wife an it, there would be a follow-up conversation. You know what I'm saying? She is a she, not an it. Now, we've had dogs, and the dog who was our pet and our dearly loved one and all of that, he was a he, Tiger was a he, but he also was an it sometimes, especially if he did a doodle in the house. <laughs> Get it out of my sight while I clean this up but not a person. So he was not a person, even though he had personality. He was not a person. The Holy Spirit is a person, and part of it is that he has personality. But the main thing is Jesus said. So John 15, that's what we were looking up earlier. John 15, verse 26. And I don't know if you always see all these, uh, these code numbers and names on the screen when we show you addresses for verses, but it's 15 colon 26. That just is a shorthand. It means chapter 15, once you get there in your Bible, then look down. It's divided in little bitty verses. It's verse number 26. Jesus is talking, and it's towards the end of his life on earth before he ascended back to heaven and he, uh, before, he, uh, before he went to the cross. And he said, I will send you the advocate. 
This word has been translated so many ways. It's literally someone who's called alongside to help you. And I love that he's sometimes called the helper. He's sometimes called the, the, this word translated helper, comforter, a lot of different, uh, different ways. I, I do really like this idea of advocate. Uh, so the literal is someone who's called alongside to help. An advocate is someone who's called alongside to help. They've got your best interests in mind. They're looking out for you. They're guiding you, maybe giving you advice. They're st- st- sticking up for you if you're in battle. That's an advocate. And all of that is just a really beautiful flavor uh, uh, of us to understand how the Holy Spirit is towards us. Jesus said, I, but I will send you the advocate. And then he, he clarifies who that is, the spirit of truth. And that's the Holy Spirit that we're talking about. He will come to you from the Father, and he will testify all about me. You notice Jesus is not saying it. It will come. You know, it will just sort of like vaporize around you. That's not what he's saying. He's saying he will come from the Father and will testify all about me. Testifying, our little dog Tiger could not testify, but a person can testify. Uh, John 16, so the next chapter... If you're on a Bible app, just swipe, and then you'll be in 16, verse 13 to 14. Jesus is still talking. This is a long, a long um, passage where uh, it's Jesus' final days with his disciples, and so he's talking to them. He's, he prays for them and for all of us who will ever believe in him. It's a really very powerful, important time. So what Jesus is saying here is a big deal. He said, <clears throat> excuse me, when the spirit of truth comes... He will guide you into all truth. Ah, so there's, that's something that he does. He will not speak on his own, but he will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory, Jesus said, by telling you whatever he receives from me. So uh, all these things that Jesus just said the Holy Spirit will do, I, a, 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 a force... Like, um, uh, electricity couldn't do those things. Um, electricity is powerful, but it can't testify, speak, tell the future, guide you. These are things a person does. And the Holy Spirit is a person. God is three persons in one being. Uh, here's another thing the, the, the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit also prays and intercedes for you, the Bible says in Romans 8. And when you don't have the words to pray, the Bible says the Holy Spirit prays for you. That is so amazing. So he's your advocate, your helper, your comforter. He is for you. He is sent by Jesus for you, for me, to help us, to advocate for us, to give us what we need. Uh, We know from the scripture that the Holy Spirit can be blasphemed. We know that it's possible to, 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 um, to curse him, to like say a curse at him. But uh, you can't blast him against a rock or a piece of wood, but you can against a person. You can say something evil against a person. We know that the Holy Spirit can be insulted uh, from Hebrews 10, 29. Uh, Paul, or the writer of Hebrews says, don't insult the Holy Spirit. We know he can be insulted. All of these are internal clues that the Holy Spirit is a person. Here's another thing that's uh, just something you may not think about every day. The Holy Spirit can be grieved. He can be grieved. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, Paul wrote, and do not grieve or bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember he has identified, the Holy Spirit has identified you as his own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. So, so Paul, this early church leader, is writing, and he's saying, God's Holy Spirit has marked you. He has stamped you. This child belongs to God. He's watching out for you. He wants to make sure that you stay faithful to Jesus until your final breath. Or until Jesus comes first, whichever uh, comes back, whichever comes first, He's watching over you. He sealed you for the day of redemption. And and Paul, Paul is saying, so don't grieve Him. 
Don't, don't give him cause by the way you live, by the things you say or do or, or think, to grieve him, to hurt his heart. Only a person's heart hurts like this. Only a person sorrows over something another person does. And I just want to linger here for just a minute because I don't think I've ever really talked about grieving the Holy Spirit. And we don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. Uh, an author that is uh, uh, just uh, one of those Assemblies of God pioneers that has written so much um, to help us understand who God is. His name is R.A. Torrey. And he wrote that the Holy Spirit is a holy person who comes to live in your heart and you belong to him. He sealed you. He's marked you. This child is a child of God. And the Holy Spirit says you belong to him, to God. He sees clearly every act you do, every choice you make, every thought you think, even those things that no one else knows you thought. He, he sees every plan you make, every choice you make, and he is there. He knows what you allow into your life. And he, because he's in, in you, if you've, if you've put your faith in Jesus, the Holy Spirit has come inside you. And he is there with you, and he's, he's very present. He's your advocate. He's for you, not against you. He's trying to lead you in good paths. And he sees when you or I let something in or entertain something in our minds that, that is displeasing or unholy or impure. He sees that. He sees our selfish motives. He sees when we do something unkind or mean. He sees when we're being petty. I had a friend one time that said, don't be small. He sees that, though, at those times when we are being small towards someone. And this holy one, this one who is pure, holy, 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 it grieves him. It hurts him. It hurts his heart when we allow that kind of stuff in our lives. None of us is perfect. And so I, I, I would, if I were a betting man, I would say we probably all have grieved him in the past week. I'm sure that I have. I've snapped I, at somebody. I, I've made a rash decision without praying. All those things, those grieve the Holy Spirit. And, and Paul is just reminding he, us he is a person and he only wants the best for you. So let's live in such a way that we don't grieve his heart. You know, I, 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 um, I, I, I hear lot, lots of talk. I don't know how to say this uh, delicately, but I, I just hear talk where we sort of sling God's name around lightly, where we say, oh, I... I um, I got an extra scoop of ice cream. That was the Holy Spirit. I would just say, let's just be careful about how casual we are with God. He is your friend. He lives inside you. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother, but he's still God. So is it possible to, to love someone and also respect them? I think it is. Let's do that with God, for sure. He is God. We don't want to grieve his heart. Now, the cool thing is you can employ the fact to your advantage, knowing that things you do might grieve him. You can say to yourself, you know what? When I'm thinking about making that choice right now, I'm going to choose to think about how would that affect the Holy Spirit. We've all done this. In fact, pro probably every young person at some time has done this with your parents. A lot of times the boys, when they become a teenager and they're tempted to do this thing or that or the crowd's doing this thing or that, they picture their godly mama who's always saying, I'm watching you. And they don't. A lot of times the boy, a son does not want to grieve his mama. And if the boy, if he will pay attention to that, it will help him to not do stuff that would grieve his mama. Same thing a lot of times with daughters. They don't want to grieve their daddy. They don't, they don't want to hurt his heart 
by making a spur of the moment choice. And the fact that they know that it could grieve their parent, it can be a deterrent, like a positive deterrent. Well, I don't want to grieve my mama. I don't want to grieve my daddy. And that can help us. How much more the one who is all holy, the Holy Spirit, it's in his name. He is holy. How much more can we just say, you know what? I love the Holy Spirit. He's looking out for me. He's trying to guide me into a good life. I don't want to grieve him. Maybe when you reach for that, when you start to say that, when you let a thought uh, uh, make a nest in your, in your, in your mind, maybe it, when that starts to happen, you could say, ah, I don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. I'm just going to go ahead and say no to that thing. And so it's not a fearful thing. It's more of like, I want to cooperate with the Holy Spirit because he's my advocate. He's your helper. He's your comforter. He is for you, not against you. The Holy Spirit is a divine person. He is not an impersonal force. That is not who he is. And because of that, I use this word specifically in my intro. A Jedi, this is a fictional character in a fictional world. Sorry, spoiler alert for some of you. Star, Star Wars fans, a Jedi wants to harness the force to control it, to do what he wants, to get him ahead, to get his own agenda ahead, whether good or bad. He wants to harness the force. The force. That's not how it is with the Holy Spirit. He is powerful, and he is a force to be reckoned with, but he is a divine person. He is God, and we do not harness him for our purposes. That is not how it works, although we do sometimes try. If you examine your prayers, and if I examine my prayers, do we at times pray something like, God, give me your power so I can do this thing? Mm, okay, mm, or, do we, or would it be better to say, God, I want to know you. I want to know what you want, and I want you to accomplish your power through me what you want. You want that person healed? I'm all in. You want that person saved? I'm all in. What do you want? He wants to know you. He's a person. He wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to show you his life everlasting. He wants to guide your life to work through you to accomplish the Father's purposes. That is what the Holy Spirit is doing. Third truth, the Holy Spirit loves you. The Holy Spirit loves you. Now, we often thank God for his love in our prayers, in our time of worship, or even when we're singing, a lot of times we'll just say, God, the Father, thank you for sending your son. That was so, uh, so uh, sacrificial, so giving. Thank you, Father. A lot of times we, we say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. Thank you, Father, for your love. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. Love that, that led you to lay your life down for us on the cross. Sacrificial love. You laid down your life. Thank you, Jesus. So we thank the Father. We thank Jesus for the, his, their love all the time. But do we ever think to thank the Holy Spirit for his love? He is God. Now, how did the Holy Spirit demonstrate his love. I just so said how the Father did, how Jesus did. How, is, how has the Holy Spirit demonstrated his love for you and for me? Well, before you knew Jesus, before you started following Jesus, before and maybe some of you haven't started yet. Maybe you're just sort of on a journey seeking him, trying to figure out who God is and stuff. Before you put your faith in Jesus, it was the Holy Spirit who was coming to you, pursuing you, and trying to bring you to a knowledge, to an awareness that you, uh, you are a sinner, I'm a sinner who needs a Savior. That's the Holy Spirit's work. He is convicting of sin. Now imagine this. Uh, you might say, well, that he's just doing his job. But in, he demonstrated his love for you in that while you might have been running away from God, you, uh, that he went after you. He's like, no, you're worth it. I love you. I want to bring you to, to the Savior. I want to bring you to the Father. I want to bring you to salvation. Possibly some of you went through some paths of sin that were pretty gnarly, that grieved the Holy Spirit, and yet 
He kept pursuing you. That is evidence of his love for you. He loves you that much that he would even follow you through some seedy places, calling you, don't do that. Come on, come on back. I want to show you a savior. You, that you don't have to stay in your sin. And he reveals Jesus to you. We can preach about him. You can read about him in the Bible. But when you begin to know Jesus, it is the Holy Spirit who's revealing him. Do you know that when we talk about being born again, putting your faith in Jesus and being born all over, that is being born of the Spirit. That is how, well, that's one of the ways that he shows you that he loves you. He gives you new birth rebirth, a second chance in life, a start over, a do over. Everyone wants that. And it's the Holy Spirit who enables that. It's a regeneration. It's, it's a, a, a new birth of the Holy Spirit. If not for the never tiring, never ending love of the Holy Spirit for you and for me, we would spend eternity separated from God. But instead, when we welcome him in, when we welcome God into our lives and he comes in by the Holy Spirit, he does not abandon us. He is actually with us for all eternity, starting now. Just think of how much the Holy Spirit loves you, that he would say, I'm gonna, at, at your invitation, I'm gonna, I want to move in. I, I want to be with you, that you are never alone. You don't ever have to be afraid because the Holy Spirit is with you. You will never be separated from God, from his presence, because of the Holy Spirit. He's your advocate, your comforter, your, te your teacher, your guide. He is everything you need. He is God. I read a quote from David Diga Hernandez, and he wrote, the precious Holy Spirit, the very same who hovered above the face of the deep, when the Father spoke all things into existence, this precious Holy Spirit comes to forever abide with us the very moment we receive God's gift of salvation. The Holy Spirit gave breath to the beginning, skills to the crafters of the tabernacle items, dream interpretations to Joseph. These are Bible stories we're referring to. The Holy Spirit gave wisdom to Solomon, psalms to David, a revelation to the prophets, and power unto the early church. The same Spirit who was in them dwells in you. And what's more, the exciting reality is that he can be known because he is a person. More than a force or a feeling, the Holy Spirit can be your friend. And I like that quote because there's that alliteration. I love it. Three Fs. More than a force, more than a feeling, the Holy Spirit can be your friend. You can learn what it is to walk in freedom, power, holiness, and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Wow. So we've been learning about this great God who created the universe, this Holy Spirit who is present everywhere at once pursuing us and trying to lead us to Jesus. And he's so vast and so great, but the good news is he loves you. He knows your name. He even knows your middle name. I don't even know your middle name. He knows how many ha uh, hairs on your head. He knows everything about you, and he loves you, and he's for you, and he's your advocate and your guide. So how can you develop your own friendship with the Holy Spirit. He often is sort of the neglected by us member of the Trinity, but he's there and he is in you if you put your faith in Jesus. How do friendships of any kind grow? Through time spent together, conversations, and shared activity. The same way you build any friendship with another person on earth, you can build a friendship with the Holy Spirit. So take time with the Holy Spirit. A great way to do that is to uh, read some of the Bible every day. The ch our church, our congregation has a Bible reading plan. It's on, it's on our app, it's on our website. Um, just sit down, uh, take a little time, carve out some time with the Holy Spirit. Read the Bible, 
talk to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, I'm reading this. Help me to understand what you want me to know from this. Help me to understand what you're trying to convey through this. Help me to draw closer to you and just spend a little time with the Holy Spirit and talk to him. Talk to him like you would talk. You don't have to talk all weird. Just talk like you would talk. Be authentic. Be real with the Holy Spirit and invite him in to your day. That's time, conversation, shared activity. As you go about your day, say, Holy Spirit, would you come with me? And be ready for him to interrupt your day. I don't know if you're like me. I have a list prioritized in order for every single day plus. But when you are doing a shared activity with the Holy Spirit, when you are living life with the Holy Spirit, he may say, um, we're going to set that aside for a second because I do need you to go over here and talk to this person for a moment. And that is the best shared activity of all. When you can feel the Holy Spirit saying, go here, do this, pause just a moment. And you can see what he was doing through that. You got to encourage someone, tell them God loves you or whatever he lays on your heart, pray for him. Wow, that is a shared activity that will build your friendship with the Holy Spirit. It's so amazing and so cool. Jesus said, I'm not leaving you alone. I'm going to send the advocate, the helper to you. He wants to be in a deep relationship and a growing deeper relationship with you. Pastor Vlad uh, Savchuk said that he changed his prayer from God, give me your power to Holy Spirit, I want to know you better. And that inspired me because I have prayed that prayer many a time. I want the power. But probably what precedes that is the presence. The presence. It's being with the Holy Spirit, actually knowing him, actually knowing what he would want to give power for. That's a, that's a great precursor to his power flowing through your life. Just like the prodigal son started out by telling his father, give me what's mine. But after he reached a broken place in his life, his prayer changed to make me your servant, father. And what did the father do in that story? He said, oh, no. No, I'm calling you higher than that. I appreciate your heart, but you are a son. Wow, I love it. What if we changed our prayers? What if you changed your prayer to Holy Spirit, I want to know you better. And, and here's the time. I'm going to give you some time. And I'm going to invite you in my day. Let's do this. What would happen to your life? How would your walk with God change? It would flourish and thrive, and you would go to another level with yeah. God. And that's what we all want, amen? Why don't you stand to your feet and let's pray right now. Let's, just, let's begin to pray that prayer right now. Uh, would you just bow your heads with me and let's just, let's just pray. Holy Spirit, I want to thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for loving us enough to pursue us when we were running the other way from God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for revealing I'm a sinner because we're all a sinner. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for showing us a Savior. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for re, re, uh, just revealing Jesus to us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for, for being our advocate, our guide, our helper, our teacher. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for reminding us of the words and works of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Holy Spirit, we want to know you better. We want to know how you think and, and what your plans are for our day and for our lives. We want to know what your plans are for the world. We want to know what you're crying about today. We want to know what's grieving you today. We want to know what you're laughing about today. We want to know what you're shouting for joy about today. Holy Spirit, we want to know you better. Holy Spirit, we want to yield to you more and more. Your word says that if we walk by the Holy Spirit, we will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. And then we will grieve you less and we'll feel closer and the cycle will keep going. So Holy Spirit, help us. Help us yield to you more. We honor you as God, the third person of the Trinity, Holy Spirit. We honor you. We worship you as God. With your head still bowed, I'm wondering if some of you today are in the same boat I am at, and that is, I want to know the Holy Spirit more. Anybody want to have a deeper friendship relationship with the Holy Spirit? Let me just see your hand, if that's you. And Lord, you see our hands, 
our hands raised right now are a sign of hunger and a a sign of desire for your Holy Spirit. We do want you, Holy Spirit. Now that we know how much you want to be our friend and our advocate, we want to be your friend. And so, Holy Spirit, I pray right now that you would help us to begin to think over our week. Lord, we've got such a busy week coming up. Lord, show us where and when we could just set aside some time and make you first. Even if it's for a few minutes, Lord, show us where. Holy Spirit, guide us to a time with you. Guide us into conversation with you. And today, Lord, guide us into shared activity with you. Interrupt our drive home if you have to. When we get home, interrupt our our TV plans. Uh, Holy Spirit, let's do it with you today. Yes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You can put your hands down. With your head still bowed, one more invitation. And I'm wondering if the Holy Spirit's been working on you, on your heart, to, to just reveal to you that you need a Savior, like he did for me. If you have not put your faith in Jesus, then the Holy Spirit has not yet come in to live inside you. So I want to invite you to put your faith in Jesus today. How do you do that? Turn away from your sins, turn your life over to Jesus, and let him be your leader, the leader of your life. And when you make that decision, you are born again, born of the Spirit, and the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of you. It's amazing. God with you. If today you want to make that decision and put your faith in Jesus to become a Christian, maybe you're coming back to the Lord, maybe you've never made this decision, would you just raise your hand and that'll tell me, I should pray for you like I've been praying for hand raisers all day today. If you want to put your faith in Jesus, would you raise your hand? And if you're online, I want to give you that invitation too. Yep, I see your hands in the room and that is so cool. Online, you can raise your hand to God and he can see you right where you're at because he is everywhere. So I'd love to just coach you in a prayer. And this is, man, this has been Breakthrough Sunday all day, and it's going to be Breakthrough Sunday for someone right now spiritually. So would you pray this prayer to God? And I'm just going to do a a quick repeat after me prayer, but pray it to God. Church, help them out. Let's just all pray this together. Jesus, Jesus, I invite you into my life. I acknowledge acknowledge I'm a sinner. sinner. Please forgive me of my sin. And make me new. I choose to follow you and be your apprentice. Holy Spirit, I welcome you into my life. Live with me forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Can we just say praise God? Welcome. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Welcome to the family of God. And if you just put your faith in Jesus just now, or if you've done it recently, a couple things. Be baptized, and then Pastor Christian is going to tell you about a resource we have for you. Yes. So if today was your day, or if you are just a new believer and you want to know how to follow Jesus, we have a really cool resource for you. It's called the Following Jesus Book and Course. So um, I encourage you, stop by. There's a little table in the lobby, black table with a big banner. Excuse me. Um... I'll be there. I'll, I'll get you a, set up with a book, get you set up with a course. We'll also talk about how we can walk alongside you as, as you start following Jesus. We want to equip you to do that. Amen? Awesome. And also, if you filled out a, a Connect card, if you could just put that in the, in the offering box on your way out, out, that would be awesome. So we can pray for your prayer requests and also connect with you. And then um, today, so guess what's happening this week? All of this carpet is going to be finally replaced. Say goodbye to the avocado green, people. <laughs> it's going to be great. So what, what we're going to have to do then is, is move all the, stuff, all the stuff out of this room. So if you can stay after just to help, many hands make light work. So it would be a great big help if you could help, help and tear stuff down. Yeah, <laughs> I can say that right. All right, we love you guys. God bless. those of you staying to help tear down, let me give you a little bit of instruction. All of the chairs in the worship center, we want to stack in stacks of eight. And you can just put them wherever. We're going to move them out tonight. 
So right now we just need all of these chairs in the worship center to be in stacks of eight. All right. So that's where we start. And then, thank you, Leo. And then all of this room over here needs to be moved out of this room through the hallway and where the nursery is, the half, the, the, the half that's towards the front doors is empty. We want to move this stuff into that room, okay? So that's, that's a good place to start. And um, then everything up here, we need to put on the stage, okay? Okay. 